Covering this Dubs and Kings series has been a whirlwind, as both coaches in Mike Brown and Steve Kerr have been anticipating each other's next move like a heated game of chess. Hey Mike, we got all new plays now. You don't know any of them. We got all new plays. Hey, you know these guys so well. <laughs> the series is firmly knotted at two games apiece, and game four went down to the final possession with a nerve-piercing roller coaster ensuing up to that point. Fox and the Kings continue to prove they're not merely happy to be here, as De'Aaron dropped the first 35.5 board and five dime playoff game in franchise history since now 84-year-old Oscar Robertson, who did it back in 1966. Keegan Murray broke Hito Turkoglu's rookie playoff single game scoring record for the Kings Sacramento era. In spite of that effort, Ultimately, the combination of the Splash Brothers' definitively masterful shooting featuring Hogwarts-like off-the-dribble creation from Steph, in addition to Draymond Green's all-time defense and season-best calm, cool, and collectedness, having the maturity to play his first playoff game off the bench since 2014, along with Steve Kerr's versatile playbook, were all enough to even the series. Aside from the late blunder where Steph called timeout when Golden State didn't have any left, costing the dubs a point and possession, and also aside from an early second quarter flurry from Sacramento, despite this one being a close battle, it felt like the Warriors were bound to make their imprint felt. The clutchness of Foxy nearly put that narrative to sleep though, but prior to that, we saw the ultimate battle ensue between debatably the two best coaches the NBA has to offer. Steph Curry definitely stumbled into a Chris Webber type moment by calling an illegal timeout, but for the most part, the execution from both teams was some of the best you'll see play out in a basketball game. We'll start with this ATO, where Jordan sets the UCLA screen for Andrew, Steph fakes the pass to Wiggs, then it turns into a zipper loop set, where JP cuts to the corner, where he gets a flare from Draymond. Tomas is accurately expecting the slot-to-slot -slot action between Dante and Steph right here, but Curry improvises, whipping an entry bullet to the left wing for Draymond, cutting back door on Mitchell, and it's a give-and-go where Steph attacks the weak side lane for the tough finish in traffic. This weak side flare pop action sees Steph set the pick instead of the typical screener in this action and Dre do it, who Barnes is expecting to slip to the hoop, and Dre gets a wide-open corner spot up. It's a pretty big luxury for Kerr when he can get individual transition mastery from the greatest shooter ever to mix up those half-court sets. Steph's gonna draw two defenders as he crosses half, freeze Domas with a moving cross between the legs and in and out dribble, step back around the top of the key before getting into his patented nasty double step back to get space away from Mitchell, before changing his release by following through further to avoid the traffic of Davion, Kings were up early though, as Fox gets a typically elusive drive entry off a stagger set by Murray and Sabonis, and watch how he gets just enough space on his release point to float it over Looney, who's right there. DHO keep in transition, Sabonis top steps into the lane where he probably gets away with the travel, but nonetheless is able to manufacture a bucket in a split second with that action using his brute force. Barnes becomes a victim of a tough to gauge hezzy dribble and stop on a dime for the 28 foot pull up. Next. He sauces up De'Aaron Fox after pushing the tempo with a moving between the legs and deep range bomb. The balance off the dribble combined with the range is just unheard of. Clay had it rolling all night as well. Even after Herder forces him to pick up the dribble and smothers him, he still hits the midi on this play. Next, this one out baseline out of bounds is run on the opposite end of the floor and with Clay acting as the one, a nice innovation to fool Mike Brown as Thompson gets the open look in his sweet spot on the baseline. Some necessary and frankly insane dirty work from Loon after Draymond misses this three as he comes inches away from stepping out after securing the O board and somehow stays on balance while finding the right angle to dump it off to Wiggs. All series we've seen DHOs, fake dribble handoffs, keep action DHOs like we saw earlier all from Sabonis but Draymond gives him a taste of his own medicine right here after Andrew swings it to the weak side corner. The dubs seem to be starting a five out handoff action, but Dre hangs onto it, selling the pitch perfectly, opening up the lane for the one handed hammer. From there, Wiggins and Poole would have a big time surge in the late third quarter as Wiggs pulled off a dream shake and hit a three pointer on consecutive possessions. 
I find it amazing the flow that Andrews established after missing such an extended amount of time and how he's come back right for the playoffs and has adjusted seamlessly to the speed and intensity of it. After those couple buckets from Wiggs, JP would then get consecutive lay-ins. This 5-out kick and relocate set where Green seems to be coming up for the on-ball sees him instead set a flare as Steph throws it to Poole, but the Kings seem to have sought out the action, which is for DiVincenzo to set a cross screen for Steph in the corner. So Poole reacts by finding DiVincenzo, who drives and kicks it back to Poole as Steph cuts out to the right wing. Then Poole swings it to the left corner for Thompson, who hits the buzzer-beating triple. Curry would continue his wizardry by hitting consecutive threes and taking over in the fourth quarter in general. Jordan Poole was big time all night, as it was his best game of the series by far. Out of an SLOB, the Kings would run an on-ball stagger screen with Barnes and Domas, with Fox getting the matchup he likes in Looney and floating it over him. Down the stretch out of an ATO, Kerr would combine a kick and relocate action with Steph and Poole running a zooms action with Poole handing it right back to Steph, and the Kings are so confused that Jordan doesn't even have to set the screen. Up two in the clutch, the Warriors go to their floppy action with Clay getting just enough room after a wild closeout from Monk. Green would rack up a game-saving play where he first blocks Harrison Barnes, then as it deflects to Sabonis, he stuffs Domas. Just an outstanding defensive performance from Green in this one. It's nights like these where you see why De'Aaron Fox and many others, including myself, consistently call him the best defensive anchor in basketball. So much for those saying Green is washed. Green was the enforcer that he's paid to be all night, especially when the Warriors needed it most. Stephen Curry, Draymond Green, and Klay Thompson have won 94 playoff games together throughout the years, which is third most by a trio in NBA postseason history. They only trailed Duncan, Parker, and Ginobili, along with Kareem, Magic, and Cooper. This series is going to come down to how these three lead their troops on the road, a setting they've mightily struggled to perform in all season. On the road, the whistle is inevitably against you, no matter if you're the defending champs or not, so it'll be thrilling to see if the dubs can finally show up in said hostile environment. The return of Andrew Wiggins has been vital, as Draymond was right on the mark when he said on his podcast that the Warriors are different with my fellow Torontonian. Wiggs and Green, even Curry and Poole as hard as that is to believe, were blowing up the Kings play sets all night, and they struggled getting into a secondary action. Conversely, when the Kings blitzed or figured out what the Doves were running, the Warriors seamlessly flowed into their next action. The Kings run a lot of dribble handoff motion, and that's become more predictable to scope out as this series has progressed. Plus, many only consider that Mike Brown knows Steve Kerr, and forget to consider that Steve Kerr knows Mike Brown, and is well aware he took a lot of his offensive motion. Going back to the value of Wiggs, and when Andrew is matched up with the Kings top player in De'Aaron Fox over four games in this series, he's held him to 28 points on 29 shots. Both teams have protected home, and as Steph said earlier in this series, the series doesn't start until the home team loses. For the dubs specifically, theme of the night was their selflessness. Draymond said it was his idea to come off the bench due to the spacing being good the game prior with him out. Steph continues to accept the frustrating yet necessary rotations from Kerr to always keep his long-term health as the number one priority, and despite Steph having a Chris Webber type moment, Steve Kerr would take full responsibility for that blunder. The egoless Warriors continue to shine bright. I thought their scrambling defense to get the Kings a less than ideal look at the buzzer was solid after Fox had hit a couple shots. In addition to who could win first on the road, this series will come down to whose number one option will outduel the other. Will it be the reigning defending champion in Wardell Stephen Curry II? Or are we witnessing the future before our eyes in last name Fox, first name him? Wednesday's showdown and these games to come will give us all we need to know. Steph,